how you know a universal applicator that's the way that a head bale and a and a race and a crush has already been built in on farm so g'day welcome to the farms advice podcast with your host jack creswell whether you farm it service it or just love it this podcast is for you We'll bring you the techniques and technologies you can implement into your day straight from the leaders and innovators themselves. Spread the farm's advice so that we can reach more farmers right across Australia. Follow us on all of your socials at Farms Advice and let's get into this episode. Welcome to the Farms Advice podcast. A familiar face and not so familiar, but maybe familiar to a couple out there. Melita and David Smith, how are you going? Really well, thanks, Jack. Thanks for inviting us. Good to have the duo in here again. We had you on previously, David, going over Sarah's tag and what it meant for yourself as a sort of new device within the industry, both within Australia and also doing some good work globally um, with a bit of wildlife. And you may expand on that a bit further on. But Melita, would you like to in- introduce yourself and David and what Sarah's tag is in a little rap sheet, wrap it up for us? Sure. So Melita and David Smith, we are the co-founders of Sarah's tag. Yep. We've um we're also partners, so I think that makes a, a whole lot of sense to be in ag tech together because agriculture is based out of um husband and wife teams that have continuously improved their their farming practices and their agricultural agribusinesses and we're one more um industry within that growth trajectory. So we've developed the world's first direct to satellite. Uh, plug and play livestock monitoring device. A whole platform is not only being used by livestock, but is now being used by um, conservation groups, by those taking care of feral animal control. And it's a really exciting space to be in. We've only been commercial since May 2021. And so we've had um, a great and incredible growth of adoption now across into 25 countries around the world. But of course, we're passionate livestock producers in our family and we build a, a a platform with our team and our investors to be able to support that industry in Australia first and around the world now. Absolutely. Great um, little wrap up there in an, a fine cocoon. But it's interesting technology. You say you've been ar- around since May last year. Was that since the development of what we'll be talking about today, the launch of Sarah's Tag? So the, the commercial launch of Sarah's Tag happened at Beef Week 2021, which was super exciting because that was the depths of COVID. It was one of the very only face-to-face uh, ag events that we were able to have in Australia at the time. But we've had four or five years of R&D um, before that, which is why a lot of people think we've been around for a long time. We've been talking about Sarah's Tag and what we were hoping to achieve and how we were hoping to support uh, producers of livestock and and now grown into um, those who support uh, and care for other animals. So it feels a lot longer, but commercially available. So we're still a relatively new commercial company. So we're on a growth trajectory of continuous improvement and our new product that we've just released, which is Ceres Ranch, which is a reusable version of our original tag. So always adapting, ag tech seems to be adapting quite quickly to what the demands are of the farmers and the real users out in the environments that they work in. How did this, how did Sarah's Ranch come about and what sort of drove it to market? So Sarah's Ranch, I think, is the natural evolution of a product like Sarah's Trace is what we've rebranded the original Sarah's Tag to. The original tag had two stainless steel pins, was all about retention and the ability to only use that tag once with that unique identifier. So we could be a supply chain tool um, and that will always be part of the Ceres tag platform. But we realised that in an industry that is still learning how to best use satellite technology and the information that can be gathered, that a reusable tag that can stay on farm and go on multiple animals, uh, it helped one, it's going to help one because it's reusable, so the obvious benefit there. But secondly, it also helps with the uh, cost of this new technology. So when you can spread that over a cost per use rather than a cost per animal, it becomes a much more uh, defined 
or uh, outlay out up front. So you still get your three years of satellite tech connectivity and you still are able to use whichever software from our integrated partners you wish to use. So all that flexibility and all that upfront um, is all built in, but now you're able to, uh, using your software to record that tag has moved from animal to animal, and then it just becomes more of an on-farm management tool for those who are more interested in just how they're utilising their land and how they're best engaging with their animals and their property rather than a supply chain opportunity. You're yeah, quite a dynamic sort of piece of tech um, coming into the ears of all sort of livestock, wherever you sort of see it pleased. Um, what sort of farmers are currently use it and how did that sort of launch go? How was it received from the ag community? So we're in a pre-order phase. Yep. So what we've mostly got is people who are talking about their ambitions of how they are going to use the technology that we've brought to market. So there's quite a few pe customers that have spoken to us about maybe having a combination of, of our original tag and the ranch tag. Yep. So they might keep the uh, original tag with the steel pins will stay in their breeder cows for because they'll keep them on farm for longer and they'll use the ranch on bulls because that's, you know, the fact is if this tag comes out, you can find it and you can put it back in now uh, because bulls are bulls, right? You can only take, we might have a 300 kilo breaking force on our original tag, but a bull is a big animal. Uh, so if things happen now, we have uh, you know, environmentally as well, of course, we're dealing with uh, a rugged outside environment. So now we have the tag that can be reapplied. It's using industry standard uh, tagging techniques as well. So our original tag required a special applicator. It required some modification as to how application worked. Whereas now you can use your red handled universal applicator. It has a plastic single pin, which we all are familiar with. And it has, and that, and you just tag much more the way that we're used to as, as producers. Yeah. And I think that goes into like farmers are so they're used to working in the ways that they're used to working. And if they have to get a new applicator all the time, or if they can use what they've already got, they're more likely to actually introduce this and probably important um, when bringing ag tech onto the market so that farmer can actually access what they can using Sarah's Ranch um, and actually improving their own farm through that. I think it's pretty important to have that accessibility um, factor sort of manufactured into it. How did the development stages go for it? Because um, you you are only new, but coming up with the second product that quickly is pretty phenomenal. Um, how did that sort of come about talking from the ag tech sort of point of view? So the, the technology core is the same. What we really needed to understand and the, the feedback from our customers, you know, constructive feedback has been really important to Sarah's Tag, how we can listen to who are on the ground users of our product, what we can do to continue that, as you say, accessibility. So there's accessibility around cost, accessibility around equipment. So it's not just the applicator and the ability to do the tagging itself, but everyone has their infrastructure already built in. So how, you know, a universal applicator, that's the way that a head bale and a, and a race and a crush has already been built in on farm. So having that technology where you know where your hands go, you know where the tags go, that all makes it more accessible. The price point becomes more accessible when you go, uh, tag per use rather than tag per animal. So it's that feedback loop. And I think it's really important with tech coming on the market. If you've got a company that will uh, listen to your feedback, who got what we have, which is an email and uh, you can book a call and you talk to someone on our team around the either the both the good and the bad of what's happening. Um, and then give us time to continually improve these things can't happen quickly. There's a manufacturing process. There's a cost involved. So with any tech, not just Sarah's tag, 
the feedback loop's important, but change happens, you know, at the speed at which it can. We were really fortunate with our manufacturers and our design team that we were able to bring a reusable tag to market, as you say, so quickly after going commercial with our original product. Yeah, very well done on that sort of front. But David, last time when we spoke, we didn't have the FMD threat um, so close to us here in Australia. And I suppose this ag tech has sort of evolved and been seen as a user case for helping prevent this. Is that right? And what's the sort of discussion, industry discussion that you've had with Sarah's Tag and how it, that application can actually enhance what we do? Yeah, well, certainly foot and mouth disease and lumpy skin disease, for that matter, is a, is a big concern being so close offshore. Uh, what we have developed is the world's only automated real-time alert, unlimited range, uh, sickness detection and contact tracing platform. So just like COVID-19, we used our mobile phones to be able to notify or, or follow people and trace where our movements were and our interaction with each other. Uh, with one of our software partners, uh, Mapopedia, they built a whole simulation so that we could actually, if all the animals had a Ceres tag on them, we could see the interaction in real time of those animals. And actually, instead of just doing a, a draw a circle around 10 kilometer radius and everything gets eradicated within that sort of area for from a diseased animal, uh, instead, we could actually get... Uh, professionals to actually nominate what is the allowance and using real data they may say it's allowed only one or two kilometers yep. we could potentially save millions of animals that don't actually come within that threatened zone using real-time data um, but more excitingly i i get as if is uh well first of all it's not exciting if we do get it here it's a devastation but but what we could do is get control of it very quickly. And, you know, so sure, our markets would close down if we got it here straight away, but we could open up to markets even quicker and it would give us a reputation in the world that no matter what biosecurity incursion we were to have, we could get control of it. You know, we could identify it, we could uh, isolate it, manage it, treat it, um, and and deal with the actual disease very very quickly so i'm i'm quite uh confident that and i know other nations are, are talking to us about this uh, particular aspect and it is one of the key things that's probably not quite understood about the power of the data in which we're actually generating from from the ceres tag yeah absolutely and i think um the power lies within the data isn't it for the farmers to be actually read it, for you as a company to actually see the development in it as well. What sort of data are the farmers able to collect and what probably are the lowest hanging fruits um, for Ceres Ranch and the new product with its launch? Certainly the location, you know, and being able to report location. It, it, and everyone understands that because everyone's got a GPS in their tractors and in their cars and their mobile phone, they can look up and see where they are or where they've got to go. So they understand that part of it very quickly. But what probably not quite as well known is we have an accelerometer in the in the tag as well, and it has Bluetooth. Uh, but the accelerometer particularly can be utilized to, particularly with algorithms, to detect certain um, behavior traits or diseases or whatever the case may be, using that activity data. So once we have that activity data, we and, and then applying an algorithm to the actual tag, which we can upload through the Bluetooth uh, for those specific purposes. So the tag itself is, or the platform itself, is non-disruptable. In other words, we can keep building on it, a bit like adding new apps to your mobile phone, that you the phone now does a new type of task. And similar with the tag, with algorithms. Now, these algorithms can be developed by research institutions. Uh, naturally, most people are aware that we work with CSIRO and have had a long relationship with them, a very successful relationship with them. 
And but other uh, research institutions, universities, etc., can be building these algorithms to be applied for their specific conditions around the world. No matter where you are, everyone's everyone's situation is different. It might be the climate, might be the type of breeds, whatever the case may be. But they can build algorithms specific to their locality and their environment in which they operate. Absolutely, and that's where probably. It all gets started for you at Sarah's tag and what you can actually do from the ear tag, from the ear of the animal. Um, it's all sort of shaped by the data that's fed out of it and how you can interpret that into working with different ways. But coming back to Sarah's ranch, what are some of the questions the farmers, producers are actually asking of the tag or like what are they looking for the tag to do for them? Other than like location um, for that one, that one's probably the biggest more well known when when we set out on the journey jack we we and we did it with mla mla were yeah. uh you know integral in that setting that direction for the development and they wanted to improve traceability so hats off to them they really saw that this technology and what the power it could have uh for for the australian red meat industry and and, and subsequently we used that direction straight away but you know, we built a, a one purpose because this tag, I mean, it can hold an RFID as well. And so it could be an NLIS accredited. Now we're in the process of getting ICAR approval, which is the International Community for Animal Recording, which you need before you go for NLIS. But essentially this tag could be NLIS approved, which was pretty exciting. Now, the reason why is because this retention system is like 300 kilograms to get it off the ear. But once it goes on, it, you know, it doesn't doesn't come off. It's, you know, like NLIS said. So the banks, the retailers, the processors, all of those people want this tag because it gives you the information along the whole supply chain. You can tell a whole story like a bottle of red wine. You can say what your animal was, know it's had a good life. Healthy, well, uh, uh, yeah, healthy. It's uh, welfare was good. It's you know they, it, its provenance was very important. But someone has to pay for the tag. So while all of those parties down the line were more than happy to receive the data and and use the data and and make you know good business decisions on it, someone has to pay for it. And you know we're a developer. We need to be paid for the data as 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 well and and the device we've created so we did get approached by quite a few producers that said look i really love the technology but my biggest issue is i'm a background or i'm a breeder and the animals are only staying on my property for you know six or 12 months depending on where they were in north or south you know type situation in the supply chain so we developed the, the ranch so that because we understood if they're going to pay for it, they, they want to get as much value out of it as possible. And they, they don't necessarily want the tag to leave their own property. So NLIS for the tag was rather secondary yep. because the tags were moving on, uh, the animals were moving on anyway. So they wanted it as a management tool. Yep. And so this, this uh, tag enables them to have the location and the activity now, you know, in the future, there will be a, a an algorithm for pasture feed intake courtesy, and this is this is all public, of course. Uh, the New South Wales government and CSIRO developed pasture feed intake and feed efficiency. So knowing your measuring your amount of dry matter that's consumed, and through that and combining with you know walkover weighing situation, so you know how much they're eating to put amount of weight on. You know, that's a phenotype trait to know which animals have got the highest conversion rate. Yeah. And they're the animals you want because that's dollars in your pocket. And the dollars in the pocket, so it becomes a, and that phenotype trait is genetically passed on, to, you know, through in your breeding stock. So from this, we can start making some genetic selections of the animals in which you want to get the highest performance. But the pasture feed intake suite of algorithms, and again, it was CSIRO and New South Wales government that developed these over 15 years of, of R&D. One of those is rumination. So we can actually measure which ones are ruminating the most as opposed to ones that don't need to ruminate as often because rumination may uh, evolve more methane 
uh, emissions. So again, it's like, which ones can I get the fattest, the, the uh, quickest or put the most weight on the quickest? And which ones are requiring the least amount of rumination? So we can have an effect on climate change, profitability, and on the sustainability of the land, because how much grass do I actually need to feed these animals? And, you know, there's some great software out there like SIBO Labs who combine the animal information with the satellite imagery to understand and who understands the vegetation so that we can actually start then planning out our fields about which ones are not going to be overgrazed because we can see the amount of vegetation, but which, how much grasses do we need to, to achieve the goals that we want from our animals as well. So all of this is coming at us like a, like a, a locomotive at the moment, all this data and how we do this. And I like we get, you can tell by the way we talk about it, which it's, we get very excited about uh, the future of farming. I couldn't tell at all, David. Um, but <laughs> touching on future of farming, I think there's a lot to say about this technology is working out in the paddock today and how it can work for today's generation. I sort of knock that, let's leave it better for the next generation when we could actually have it better for this generation and twice as good for the next gen. Um, but these terms, these management tools um, are all there to sort of help us. And that interlinking of, there's a fair few episodes this episode probably interlinks with of how you can sort of encompass um, your management around um, utilising the tools of what Sarah's Ranch is um, and that accessibility, but also being able to adapt it to other animals, um, depending what sort of, if you're backgrounding, um, or you're using it for your breeders just to get some real value out of that for the farmers. It's it's interesting for you to see what sort of questions farmers are asking and how what the proactive ones are doing and the ones that are sort of waiting for this technology to be mass intake, I suppose, are probably benefiting off those proactive ones um, asking these questions. They probably got it themselves right, but they just haven't yeah. approached approached the person, the tech or something to bring it to fruition. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting, Jack, I had the fortune to go to Montana and I was up there actually to see where we're involved in the rewilding of bison with the Smithsonian. But in actual fact, our first customer was in Montana in the US. Oh, I that, yes. So we, uh, I had the fortune to go and visit them. And, and so I sat down with them and I said, so you were our very first customer, which they they just blew their mind that they bought the first out of Australia, this Australian technology. And they, I said, so why did you buy Ceres Tag? And they said, well, I, I don't understand why you're not going to buy it because we got five kids. They're off at basketball, baseball, you know, during the week we're at uh, school events, we're at all of these. We don't have time to sit down and watch our cattle. We've got to be able to, you know, we've got 10,000 cattle, we need to be able to see them on the phone. If they're okay, no alerts, then leave them alone. I need to know that simple so that I can have a life and have a family that does it. And I think this, the next generation through it, look at things completely differently. They, they want to have a life as well as just farming because farming's hard yakka, right? Yeah. So I think it's important. What people want <laughs> is all the, the romantic, traditional, things that we all grew up with or that we imagined farming is, and then you lay over the top of that technology that makes it easier, better, and gives you more time to do the other things as well. And yep. so we've always said we were we want to be able to fit in with people's current practices and be an opportunity for improvement or for, you know, if you're already good, you get better. You know, when you know better, you do better. And for people who are still learning, it just it's a time thing. But what David was saying about the new research opportunities and things around new algorithms, it means that we can have this really global platform that has a regional focus. So we're often asked, who's your customer? Well, it's anyone who cares about animals, whether that's the now that we have this wildlife interest as well. So whether you are a producer who's growing uh, animals for, for the protein market, if you're uh, someone who has a, a sideline hobby with a little start and they want to keep an eye on it, or are you someone who is interested in 
managing feral pests yeah. or are you in this conservation space? We don't limit you and we're learning all the time the new things that people can do and there are questions that are being answered that people didn't know they could ask until they got this data. And so one of the hardest things is then when you start enjoying the data and being able to make all new decisions, what happens when you don't have enough, then you want more data. And so that uh, customer from Montana that David was talking about is a return customer of ours. So that's exciting. We've now been uh, in market long enough for people to have you know, made some mistakes, improved what they would do, having new ideas and new ways of engaging with what the Ceres Tag platform can do. So that's a really exciting next step. So the future is here. Absolutely. And it's probably as close as we're going to get to being in two places at once. The data is at one spot and you're looking after the kids just like they are over in Montana. We, we actually might have to link him up and get him on the podcast. That would be pretty interesting. Sure. Um, but I think the way of the world where it's going and how these types of management tools can enhance how we do everything, um, not only measuring where the livestock walk um, or their health or whatever, but it also allows us to work on other jobs that can improve their health or improve our bank balance as farmers and maybe look to offset these harsher years that are coming ahead at some stage, touch wood, um, they don't. But we know we're going to go through these times and I think to encompass these sort of tools into our way of working um, is going to be second to none. Agree. Let's let's go in. How is it actually interpreted? Um, what like how do we read the data as a farmer? Where's it coming to? <clears throat> so the the tag generates the data. So first of all, you buy you buy them online, and they arrive at your door. They're plug and play. You don't have to set up any infrastructure at all. You put them on the animal. When you purchase the tags, you nominate which software you would like to use. So it's we don't actually have our own end user software. And that's because we were informed during the development phase that people are sick of having to swap between apps or software platforms and, and things. So we didn't develop our own. Instead, we integrated with a whole range of different software. And so if you go to our website, you can see all of the ones and there's quite a selection there and there's more coming as well. Um, so you choose your software, you you hook that in just through a click of a button through our portal. Um, you put it on the animals and the, the applicator actually turns the ones on, but with the ranch, the new ranch, you get an application tool as well. And you turn the tag on and let the tags, let the animals go. It's then sending directly to satellite so we use Global Star satellites. Yep. Excitingly, Apple uses the Global Star satellites now for their new iPhone 14 for their emergency messaging. So it's we've we've got a that um, we've got a very capable satellite system uh, through Global Star. Then it, the data is received down through a ground station, then into our portal. And then we shift that immediately to your choice of software. So, like I said, some of those that uh, that we've used extensively in the past is ones like Mapopedia, Cebo Labs, there's AgPro, Access Tech. Uh, there's one, there's a Japanese one called Rogica. There's uh, there's many different software in which people could use. And it depends whether, you, you know, if you want a blockchain one, there's blockchain one, uh, software like Ag, Ag Live. Uh, or iTrazo or, you know, so it depends what it is that you, you're you trying to achieve and there's the software to suit that. Beautiful. So whatever the farmer is sort of looking for, they'll be able to find some data that someone had to, may not have read um, in that sort of way and how it may work for the farmer. I think that's a good way of working how the farmer can sort of choose where they're looking. I've seen it being a bit of a pain point for some farmers having so many different applications they barely like going from email to excel and um, that one's pretty hard enough as it is um, when you're on the run and you've got some time pressures as well but i think what you're doing what the outlook of it um, and the spread looks quite good anyway i think Sarah's ranch is going to be here to stay for australian farmers well done on the launch of it um coming from may last year can't believe it yeah thank you very much thank you so for for the tag, where can we go have a look at it? Ceres.com? 
you have sarastag.com and then you can click on, um, we've got three products there now, uh, Ceres Wild, which is not just for wildlife and conservation, but it has uh, sends up to 24 data packets a day. So it's obviously more expensive. Yep. And we have our original Ceres to Trace product and we have our Ceres Ranch. So they're all there. You can have a good look around and all our software partners that uh, are integrated are also there and you can link through to their websites from ours so that you can make contact with them and find out which is the product, the software platform that suits your budget and what you want to achieve. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much for coming on to the Farms Advice podcast. Before you leave, what would be your one piece of farms advice you'd like a listener to take away um, from the new product of Ceres Ranch? Ceres Ranch is your opportunity to get into uh, animal monitoring from your from your phone, from your computer. It's a way to talk with other people in your business because you can all get the, the map up and have a look and a conversation together. You can see actual paddock movements. You and it's 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 so simple because it's now got industry standard um, application and and use. So it feels more like what we're used to, and it has no other infrastructure. So you don't have to make a big investment in a lot of other things. So I say give it a try. You might be surprised how much you learn about your animals that you thought you already knew. We only ever, they only ever behave the way we see them when we're around. When we're not around, they behave completely differently. And it's really fascinating once you you get hooked on the data once you start. Beautiful. Well, we'll be able to find all of the details in the show notes wherever you're listening. So David, Melita, thank you very much for coming on to the Farms Wise podcast. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Cool. This Farms Advice episode does not stop here. Come and join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, and even join our Facebook group. Go to farmsadvice.com.au for more on this episode and spread the hashtag Farms Advice to your mates. If you can leave a review on Apple or Spotify, that will let other farmers find us too. But until then, see you next Tuesday. In the spirit of reconciliation, the Farms Wise podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people today. Mm-hmm.